Hi everybody, I am Katherine Gomes and I am the author of Exploring Creation with Mathematics, the elementary math series from Apologia. I am so excited because level six, the final level in the series, is coming out spring of 2024 and I have my print review binder here to give you a sneak peek at everything inside of it um, so that you can get a look at what's coming before it comes out officially. So um, if you're new to Apology of Math or the full name is Exploring Creation with Mathematics, the first two levels, level one and level two, came out in 2020 and um, this is level three. Every level has two books, the Spiral Bound student book and then the teaching guide answer key. And these three, level one through three, um, are super similar in their layout and everything. And then there's a little bit of a change, small change, I'll show you. When you get to level four, here's level five, and level six is coming out very shortly. So um, let's take a dive in and I can show you what's in level six and also just cover some of the basics of the series. There's nothing better than flipping through uh, a physical book to see what's covered and you can't do that just yet um, because this isn't out yet but I'm going to do the best I can to give you an inside look at math six so again this is my print review copy that's why it's in a binder so uh, just a quick overview of the table of contents the first unit is whole numbers decimals and fractions they review the basics they do go a little more in depth on things like factors and long division order of operations, but these are the fundamentals we need. Chapter two is decimals, chapter three is fractions, and we have mixed numbers in there. Most kids, the fractions are fine, the mixed numbers can be tricky. Unit two is ratios, rates, and percents. Love this unit. Um, just having kids connect those ideas, but they have to know fractions, decimals, and percents down pat before they get uh, into middle school. So. Lots of that. Unit three is measurement, data, and probability. Unit four is negative numbers. This is, there's so many areas that I had flagged because I've worked with lots of homeschool students and I know where they struggle, especially when they get into pre-algebra and algebra two and pre-calculus. This is one of them. So I really was a joy <laughs> to break this down for kids and really introduce it concretely and with pictures and with real life examples to set them up for success. So um, a lot of passion in that. The same goes for unit five, introduction to algebra. So we've got variables, we're working with those, representing them in different ways, inequalities, graphing, tables. And then unit six is geometry to finish this out. There's 15 chapters and 117 lessons. Now I just want to flip through to give you a basic overview. I know it's not the same <laughs> as sitting there with it, but at least you get a feel. If you're familiar with Apology of Math, you know that most lessons start with an activity. So like here, there's a long division scramble where they have a Scrambled long division problem, they have to put it in order using their knowledge of the steps. Then the lesson, so here's examples with long division, and then the practice. Um, there are some lessons that start with a warm up instead of an activity because the ideas are more, they're richer, they're more in depth. So it doesn't always make sense to have an activity every lesson because we might not, look, see this is long division day two. So this is a great example. We're not really learning something new completely. We are building on what we did yesterday. And there's also other skills where rather than having an activity, it was more important for me to reinforce a skill first. But it's still hands-on, still really engaging. Um, it's just sometimes there's a warm up. Here we have a foldable. These were so fun. I tested uh, so many of these tear out sheets at my co-op. I just love the white, the space to do your work. And whenever possible, I'm making it as engaging as I can, right? We've got images, we've got real life examples. I'll show you here at the end of every chapter, there's a review and then there's also optional tests. So I have my son do the review and then if he does well, uh, he takes the test. If not, maybe we reinforce a skill and then have him take the test. I'm just kind of jumping ahead. 
multiplying fractions. See, here's an example where we're showing it pictorially. So they would have probably done something concrete first in the activity, and now we're representing it with a picture. It just really helps reinforce knowledge for kids. Here we have graham crackers. Older kids still need fun and they still need tactile. And sometimes they still need edible math, right? So you don't want that to all disappear even as it gets richer. Unit two. Here they use a fruit salad to discover ratios and then they build on that. This makes such a difference, having these opening activities, getting kids engaged, and giving them something real life to have in their heads while they're learning the math. We still have the problem solving elements. I'll show that more in depth later. And feel free to also message me in the comments on YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook if you have a specific question about what's covered, because I know there's a lot of variation between math programs that can be confusing. Probability, here's integers and opposites. Here's uh, one of the concrete ways I'm teaching positive and negative integers. So in this picture, you can use different colors, but the blue are negative and the green are positive. And so kids are seeing how the zero pairs, is what we call them, cancel out and it helps them find the sum. Adding positive and negative integers can be so hard for kids if you go too fast, if you don't give them number lines or little chips, beans to act it out with. See, she used Skittles as her counters. It's a great idea. <laughs> Algebra. Here, they're going to simplify expression because in this lesson, they're going to use the distributive property. So they're reviewing what was covered here before they jump into something more challenging. Graphing inequalities. I love, love, love building this knowledge of equation table graph, equation table graph. Most kids will grasp one of those things more intuitively than the others. Actually, a lot of kids are really good with tables, which we as adults, I think sometimes don't use enough. And, but whichever they like, then they flesh it out by understanding how it all goes together and the, their comprehension becomes that much more rich. Geometry. And then we finish up. One of the main features of Apology of Math is the projects. And the rationale behind this is the best way to learn math is to start with a real life context. Then um, we use manipulatives, then we move to like a pictorial representation. We really engage with the math in an abstract way. And then finally, at the end, it's good to apply it back to the real world. So the projects is where that final application is happening. And the reason I created projects for you is because sometimes it's actually a lot of work to try to think of a real life application or to make a real life application happen for your child um, in just in terms of times and time and energy and all that so at the end of every unit there is a project where I've created or simulated a real life situation where they can practice their skills and it won't require skills that they don't have yet um, but you still get that fun application that really serves as a capstone to their learning let's take a look inside the level six projects and you'll see what I mean Unit one is a review of whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. And so the unit project for that unit has you practice those skills. So it's pretty simple. They have a grid, 10 by 10 grid, um, so 100 squares, and they're allowed to color it in whatever pattern they want, um, whatever kind of design is interesting to them. And then when they finish it, they count up the colors they use, the number of squares, they write it as a fraction, and then they write it as a decimal and they get to put their design here so that you have a nice um, record of that. So they can really go the extra mile with it and incorporate some art. Unit two is ratios, rates, and percents. And I have to give the credit for this project to Noelle Huey, one of the co-op teachers that I work with. She was doing an art class and she needed help at the last minute. And she was doing an activity um, with Da Vinci and the Vitruvian Man and talking to kids about ratios and the human body. 
and it was really fun. The kids had a great time. And so I adapted it here. Um, the kids measure different lengths, the palm, the foot, the height, and they compare it to Da Vinci's ratios to see if um, it holds true for them. Unit three is measurement data and probability. And the kids have so much fun, uh, especially with the probability, looking at um, dice and board games and things like that. And so then the project for this unit is to create your own board game. And so we have printables to make this you know, less overwhelming so that it's not uh, something that's gonna take a week to do. But the idea is for them to use um, some of their knowledge to make it fair, to add some fun twists and turns. Negative numbers can be a real tripping point for so many kids, so we have a whole unit on it for them in Math 6. And then, ah, oh, this was a really fun science connection project. So we've used elevations and sea level from the beginning of this unit as an example, and now students look up the highest and lowest points on each continent, and um, they make a poster, they find the difference in elevation. Uh, so it's just a great real life application of negative numbers. Unit five is introduction to algebra and um, just lots of great practice with variables and writing things different way, graphs. And so then the unit project is this equation poster. I did this all the time when I was teaching in traditional schools and I was really excited to um, adapt it to use here. So for starters, students use or invent a, a real life situation that can be modeled using algebra. So they pick the situation, which just brings investment, but also helps them to understand what they're doing because they're using something that they care about or that applies to them. They write an equation and then they do a graph, a table, and they make a poster of it. And just that different representation of the same situation is such a great way to solidify their learning. Unit six is geometry, and I saved the best for last with this project, Marshmallow Mansions. So um, it does have math connected to it. It's not just really fun, but they build um, rectangular solids out of marshmallows and um, kind of explore volume and different dimensions, um, all while you know, building with yummy treats. So with the launch of Math 6, I've been getting a lot of questions, especially from those of you who are using the earlier levels about if anything is different in the higher levels and just kind of um, how cohesive the program is. First of all, thanks if you're using levels one, two, three. You know, I really appreciate the support. And second of all, great questions. I mean, homeschool parents ask the best questions. You guys are phenomenal researchers. Okay, so when I sat down to plan an elementary math program, I knew that I wanted it to be super consistent because nobody wants to learn something new or have to pivot or anything like that. That's not helpful and it's a waste of our time. At the same time, I knew that there would have to be a little bit of a growth in the program because first grade math is so much different than sixth grade math, right? So um, there in level three, we start adding chapter reviews. And so at the end of every chapter, there is a one page, maybe two page sometimes in some of the levels, review um, with some review of other concepts, not just what was in that chapter. So I didn't really feel like that we needed that in levels one and level two because the concepts are so interrelated as is. So we added that in starting in level three. Um, and then level four is a little more where I, I changed a couple things and there's a philosophy behind it. So. Thanks to input from all of you, <laughs> we added optional tests starting in level four. So I got lots of interesting feedback on tests. I have a lot of emotions surrounding tests because I taught in traditional schools for so long. And so in the end, I decided I really don't think that it's helpful in levels one through three um, because there is so much of a relationship between the concepts and kids really might not master something till much later on and that's fine. But starting in level four, I decided, yes, this would be a helpful tool for certain parents, certain kids to have if they wanted it. So we use the word optional over and over again <laughs> to make sure that no one feels um, any kind of stress over this. So if you want starting in level four, there's a chapter test that you can give to your child. I have found it to be helpful. And um, 
it's a pretty cool vibe in our household where uh, my son, he does the chapter review, we talk about anything he missed, he takes the test, um, and you know, a lot of times it's sort of a sense of like, woo, we know this, um, and it has the skills practice on there, that's that spiraling review, so that's also great, just another reinforcement. Okay, so tests. The other element that I introduced in level four is problem solving. I'm super passionate about this. I'll try not to talk for 15 minutes about problem solving. What is problem solving? Problem solving is solving open-ended math problems, math problems that can be solved in different ways. So a two digit number multiplied by a two digit number really isn't a great opportunity for problem solving because even though there's different ways you could set it up, you need to multiply, that's how you find the answer. So open-ended problems are where kids, one kid could use guess and check, another kid drew a picture, another kid made a table, another kid wrote an equation. That's the heart of problem solving. And so um, again, in levels one through th three, kids really aren't ready for it. They don't have enough math under their belt to be trying different things. They just don't know enough, so it doesn't really make sense. But starting in level four, um, we really gradually introduce it. We teach them specifically different strategies. This is how you work backward and we're gonna now have you practice this strategy. So in level four, they actually learn the strategy. We tell them which one to use, draw a picture to solve this problem, make a table so that they can get um, sort of, what they're really learning is not the math, but the strategy, if that makes sense. And then in level five and level six, the problems get a little harder, but also, this gets me really excited, they choose their strategy. And this is a huge passion for me, whether I'm writing this curriculum or teaching at my co-op, kids have their own math style and we need to create opportunities for them to solve the problem the way they want to. And it also, it's often different than how we as parents would set it up, um, but it's, it's a key thing in becoming a mathematician. And so those are in there as well. One other thing you might notice as you get into levels four, five, and six is that it's still hands-on, but the math gets richer. And so sometimes there's gonna be a warm up in place of an activity. It might not be like starting with beans every day because the numbers are too big. Um, and sometimes I need a couple lessons to really build out an idea. So you'll probably notice, okay, here we had an activity yesterday with graham crackers, but today my kid's just doing a quick warm up to review and now we're jumping in. The science connection for level six is chemistry and physics. We also sprinkled in some human anatomy just because I got excited. Um, it was so fun. Um, we have lots of cool science facts interlaced with many of the lessons. There's projects that blend science and math. I love the science connection. It's one of the best things about writing a math curriculum for Apologia um, and it just really enriches it. The Christian element is there as well. So at the beginning of every unit, you will see short devotionals that point us back to the creator and help kids and also us homeschool parents <laughs> remember um, what the most important thing here is and how all of this is helping us learn more about God and his character and just worship him. I always crack up because I write these things and then a long time goes by and inevitably when I get to those unit openers with my kids, it encourages me. Um, so I hope it's encouragement to you as well. All right, well, that was quite the overview, but there's still a possibility that you have a question that I didn't answer. I absolutely love when Apology and Math families reach out to me. So please feel free to leave a comment. Um, I'm on Facebook, that's linked below, and I'm most active on Instagram. Um, so you can comment here, you can go on my Facebook page, but you also can message me on Instagram and I'm more than happy to give you more specifics. So thanks for considering Apology and Math Level 6.